Hello, and welcome to another episode of Crad COVID Readings. I'm Keith Arega Candido, reading my writing to make the pandemic palatable. Before I kick in with part two of Down to the Waterline, I wanted to do a quick plea for my Patreon. Um, I, I'm on Patreon, and I do all sorts of really cool stuff. Um, I always mention it at the end of the episode, but I want to mention it at the beginning just to sort of grab your attention with it. Um, here, here's for, for $20 a month, which is the most expensive of the tiers on the, on the Patreon. For $20 a month, you get a movie review every month. Anywhere between one and five TV reviews per month, depending. Um, I, I tried to be on a schedule for that, but that didn't really work. But, but there's lots of TV reviews in any case. Uh, you get regular cat pictures, sometimes as many as one a day, but certainly, you know, a couple, three a week. Um, and we have very adorable cats. <laughs> uh, every week there is an excerpt from one of my one of my works in progress of one of the many things I'm working on at any given time. Uh, once a month, I, in addition to the movie review, there is also a vignette featuring my original characters. And at the twenty dollars tier, there's also uh, you get a first look at my first drafts. So whenever I finish a chapter of a novel or I finish a short story, you get to see the first draft of it uh, in raw form. The tiers go down from there. At $10, you don't get the, the first draft look, but you get everything else. Uh, at $7, you uh, don't get the vignette. Uh, at $5, you don't get the, um, the weekly excerpt or the vignette or the first draft. Um, $2 a month gets you just the movie review and the cat pictures. $1 a month just gets you the movie review. But uh, all of those, like I said, are really cheap. And, and you know, if you just want the TV and movie reviews, that's only five bucks. Plus, you get cute cat pictures on top of that. If you just want the cute cat pictures, it's two dollars, and you get a movie review on top of that. Um, but there's, there's, it's not that expensive, and it really helps me pay various and sundry bills. So, um, if you could please consider supporting it, um, I would appreciate it very much. Uh, most, the most recent movie review was the Netflix film Vampires vs. the Bronx, which I reviewed for October of 2020. Um, most recent TV reviews include the Cobra Kai on Netflix, uh, the most recent half season of Lucifer, also on Netflix, uh, as well as the second season of What We Do in the Shadows um, on FX, as well as the 1990s show Gargoyles, which I recently rewatched all of on Disney+. Plus. So, um, anyway, check that out. Patreon.com slash cred. The link is also uh, in the comments, in the description of this video below here, and in fact is there every single time so um, please do check it out all right enough of the commercial let's go back to down to the waterline a tale of cassie zukov weirdness magnet part two rats was sitting at one of the outside tables he was wearing a white linen jacket a button-down shirt and cotton slacks this meant he was there on business normally when we met at mayor fred's or c clips he wore the usual key west uniform of t-shirt shorts and either flip-flops or moccasins the smell of Debbie's Kona coffee wiped out the disorientation, at least for a moment. As promised, a cup of same sat in the place, uh, the place opposite where Rance sat. I fell more than sat in the chair, clutched the cup for dear life, and gulped down as much as I could without burning myself. I'm going to follow suit, actually. Ah. Look, Cassie, I'm sorry to have woken you up so early, but I've got some not very good news that I figured you'd want to hear sooner rather than later, so I thought it was worth dragging you out of bed. Uh-oh. Taking another sip, thus allowing me to advance to one-syllable words, I prompted, Well, we, uh, we found Seymour. Actually, to be specific, we found his body. Suddenly, I was wide awake. What? He nodded. His body. They found it in Louisiana. Well, just under it. Um, just like Zeke. There was a... This was in an oil rig out in the Gulf, which is a federal facility, so it wound up in our lab. Since I was on the scene when Zeke's body was found, I caught the case. How, how'd he die? Pretty much the way you'd expect someone to die underwater. He drowned. Did his regulator fail? The tank blow? What? Rance tilted his head. Cassie, I told you, this was just like Zeke. Seymour wasn't wearing any of those things because he wasn't wearing anything. He was in the buff, too. I blinked, then took another sip of coffee, hoping that then it would all make sense. Spoiler warning, it didn't. I couldn't have heard that right. Rance, I've been diving since I was a kid, and I've never met a diver as conscientious as Seymour. He wouldn't take a bath without a regulator, he checked, double-checked five times. And if he was diving, that would not be an issue, but we have no idea how he got into the water in the first place. Anyhow, I saw the photos they took when they found the body. Trust me, 
It was all birthday suit all the time, just like at the Duane. He sighed and took a pad, of pen, pad and pen out of his jacket pocket. I, uh, need to ask you some questions about Seymour. Are you up to it? I wasn't, especially, but the alternative was to go back to bed. There was no way in hell I was going to be able to sleep now. Problem was, I didn't really know much beyond what he already knew, as Seymour wasn't the most open person in the world when it came to his personal life. All he talked about was diving. What about his girlfriend? Rance asked. Jerry? I shrugged. Rance hadn't shaved since I saw him last week, and the little hairs were covering the cute cheft on his, cleft on his chin. Come on, Cassie, focus. Another hardcore diver. I don't really know her that well. <laughs> it's funny, Seymour spends... My voice caught. Spent most of his time with her. They dove together a lot. She probably isn't taking this very well. She isn't. Duh, Cassie, wouldn't be talking to you before he talked to the girlfriend. What was he doing in Louisiana? Rant scratched the back of his neck. That's a $64,000 question right now. They found the body the day he went missing. As it happens, it just took this long to identify the body. Wait a sec. The day he went missing? That doesn't make sense. He frowned. I don't see why not. It wouldn't take that long to get from Key West to Louisiana in this day and age. Rant sped up. Well, if you can think of anything else, Cass, let me know, okay? I nodded. Definitely. As, it, as he turned to leave, I asked, Will you be at Mayor Fred's tonight? Normally I wouldn't, but I had to pull teeth to get working today approved, and there's absolutely no way they'll approve the overtime of me working Sunday. And I'm already in Key West for the case, so I should be there, yeah. As he started to walk away, he added, By the way, I like the t-shirt. I blinked. Rance never made remarks about my appearance. Why the hell did he make one now, of all times? I went and got some more coffee before stumbling back up the wooden stairs to my room. As I entered, I caught a glimpse of myself in the small mirror that was attached to the dresser. Fuck, I muttered. I hadn't realized that the t-shirt I grabbed was my white Scrooter Wharf t-shirt that was a bit too small on me, and I hadn't actually put on a bra. No wonder Rance made the comment. I showered and dressed more properly this time. Captain Botroff was nowhere to be seen, but he probably didn't expect me to be up this early. When I got out of the shower, there was a text from Kara asking me to take the 11 a.m. dive. I texted her back with a yes, hopped into my truck, and head over. headed over. There were three people signed up. Two were a couple from Boston who had just arrived in Key West to celebrate their anniversary. Seymour had told me about them when they made their reservation. He'd also said he liked them, which meant that it was going to be real awkward when they asked where he was. The third name on the list, though, was Jerry Nix, Seymour's girlfriend. Maybe it was just me, but I thought it was damn strange that she was going diving the day she found out her boyfriend died. When Jerry walked in, I was even more confused. Like most female divers who aren't me, uh, Jerry was real small, about 5'3". She had jet black hair and a sort of elfin look to her, and the most amazing eyes, a deep sea green. Seymour said once that staring into her eyes reminded him of diving. She was wearing a bathing suit that showed off how disgustingly thin her thighs are and carrying her gear. In other words, she looked just like she always did, not like someone whose boyfriend was ju just found drowned hundreds of miles from home. I walked up to her. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Cass. I was uh, kind of surprised to see your name on the list. She shook her head and smiled. Yeah, I know. Hell of a way to act bereaved. But I didn't want to sit around moping, so I thought, diving, that's the way to remember Seymour. It all made perfect sense, the way she said it, but why did it make me suspicious? Then the couple from Boston walked in, a Latino guy around my height and an Asian man even shorter than Jerry. Hi, said the former. I'm Marty. This is my husband, Anthony. Uh, we're supposed to be diving today. I put on my public face and made a mental note to talk to Jerry more later. Hi, I'm Cassie Zukov. I'll be handling the dive. Anthony frowned, and Marty said, Oh, okay, we were kind of expecting Seymour again. He, uh, he does still work here, right? I grimaced. Well, I better get used to it. I'm afraid that Seymour, he passed away. Oh my God, Anthony said. Marty added, that's terrible. What happened? Before I could say anything, Jerry said, he drowned. Nasty accident. Cass, I'm going to take the number four tank, okay? Uh, sure, I said, flabbergasted and pissed. The last thing you want to tell a customer is that one of your dive masters drowned. Marty and Anthony looked like someone kicked them in the head. I felt pretty much the same. Unfortunately, the opportunity to talk to Jerry failed to materialize. The dive itself went fairly well, though Anthony and Marty were understandably subdued. Marty was, like me, an underwater photographer, though he was just starting out, and I got to give him some pointers. While I did that, Jerry set off on her own and stared quietly at the ocean. She was always doing that, even when Seymour was alive and on the dive with her. It was weird, like she was trying to find something just past the horizon. Once we got back to shore, I was busy helping Marty out with the camera, and by the time I was done, Jerry had long since left. Apparently, she left so fast she forgot her regulator. Afterward, I went home, changed, bantered with Captain Botroff. 
and headed out to Mayor Fred's. I sat at the same table by the ficus where Rance and I had last sat with John and Wendy, who, unsurprisingly, hadn't booked any more dives with us in the past week. Rance was sitting at the bar with Jerry. This did not annoy me, really. After all, she was part of the investigation. It made sense that he'd be talking to her. And, this being Key West, holding an inquiry at a bar was hardly unusual. Hell, it was to be expected. Jerry was wearing a leather miniskirt, heels, a low-cut blouse, and one of those bras that can give an A-cup cleavage. I'd almost say she was trying too hard, but she hadn't actually overdone anything. Still, only tourists dress like that in Key West. For the locals, and Jerry was one, she rented a house on Whitehead, dressing up meant you wore a t-shirt that didn't have a lettering or a picture on it. Hey, Cass! shouted a voice in my ear over the din of 1812, pounding through Stevie Ray Vaughan's pride and joy. It was Gina, the waitress. The usual? I just nodded, but Gina didn't walk away. Your other half's too time in you, she said with a smile. Gina always called Rance that. He's not my other half. He's probably just talking to her about Seymour. Whatever you say, she said with a feral grin, then walked off before I could say anything else. I looked over at Rance and Jerry. They were laughing. Alarm bells went off in my head. Rance didn't laugh. I mean, he'd chuckle. He'd smirk. He'd make smart-ass remarks. He'd even chortle occasionally. But I'd never in six months ever seen him out and out laugh. When Pride and Joy ended, Rance took Jerry's hand and kissed it. In six months, he never once kissed my hand. Hell, he hardly ever touched my hand. Okay, this was silly. It wasn't a big deal, really. So why did I get up and walk over to them? Hey, Rance, Jerry. I noticed that they were both drinking margaritas. Rance always drank beer with me. Hey, Cassie, how are you? Jerry asked. I noticed her hand was still in his. Uh, okay, listen, you, uh, you left your regulator at the shop. She actually looked relieved at that. Is that where it is? I was looking all over. I was going to get Rance here to start an investigation for it. For some reason, Rance laughed at that. It was the first reaction he'd made since I walked over. He still hadn't said a word to me. Well, uh, come on by whenever you want to pick it up. Sure, she said, turning her stool so she was facing Rance. For his part, Rance hadn't taken his eyes off her. You alive in there, Rance? I prompted. Hmm? Oh, uh, sorry. I'm fine. An awkward pause followed as the pair of them stared at each other, and I just stood next to them, being ignored. Well, I'll see you guys later, I said lamely. See ya, Jerry said without looking at me, instead leaning forward to give Rance the full faux cleavage effect. Rance said nothing. Something was seriously wrong here. Rance's sentences could go on for days once he got going, and he'd never, ever been so rude to me, or anyone else for that matter. I'd seen him talk to dozens of people, even seen him flirt a few times, and he was always babbling. This was new. And very odd. Not to mention Jerry going into hound mode a week after her boyfriend died. The hell with it. I went back to my table and listened to the band and didn't think about it. Mercifully, Jerry didn't show up at Sea Clips on Sunday for the dive I was running, though Marty and Anthony did, along with a couple of locals. When I got back to the shop after the dive, I thought I saw Jerry, except when I got closer, it turned out to be a guy. I swear, it was a male version of Jerry. Same height, same black hair, same eyes. Can I help you? I asked. I'm Theo, Jerry's brother. Has she left her regulator? Ah, yes, I said, walking around behind the counter, remembering Kara mentioning something about Jerry's brother being in town. The regulator was hanging on a peg in the back room. I called out as I went into the back. Shame about Seymour, huh? I don't know why I said it, but I just felt the need to gauge his reaction. Yeah, I don't know what the hell he was doing in New Orleans. Jerry was with me when it happened. As I took the regulator off the peg and walked back out, I said, Really? He sounded oddly defensive. Weird. I had intended to run a night dive as well, but a cold snap with nasty winds hit as the sun started to go down, and the water was way too choppy. So we canceled the night dive, and I went back to the Botroff house. I farted around on my laptop for a while, not even bothering to change out of my bathing suit. And then I got an error message when I checked my email. I spent an inordinate amount of time staring at that device and frowning, the captain said. It's a tool, Cap. Tools don't always work right. I cannot deny the truth of that, he said wryly. And in this case, I haven't cleaned out my spam folder, so it's overloaded the email queue. There was not a single word in that sentence I comprehended. I laughed. The electronic version of junk mail. I always forgot to clean the stupid thing out, which was dumb because there was always something important that got inexplicably sent to the spam folder. Of course, so did some of the emails from my parents and my little sister, so it wasn't always bad. 
The folder had hundreds of messages, most of which were garbage, promising me various prizes, sexual enhancements, special beverages, moderately entertaining pornography, and financial transactions involving royalty from third world nations. And one email from Seymour, dated last Thursday night, around 11.30. The night before he died. Fuck! As usual with Seymour, he never used punctuation except for periods. It read, Cass, something weird's going on with Jerry. I'm not sure what yet, but I think it's pretty bad. She and me going to New Orleans tomorrow, and I'm scared I'm not coming back. If something happens, talk to Brother Theo about Nixie's. Trust me on this, okay? Several things occurred to me at once. One was that Jerry was supposed to have been with her brother Theo the day Seymour died. The second was that Seymour didn't die in New Orleans. He died in an oil rig under the Gulf of Mexico. Rance never mentioned New Orleans, but Theo did today, and so had Seymour last week. The third was that I really needed to fix the spam settings in my email. I tried calling Rance and got his voicemail. Rance, it's Cassie. I need to talk to you now. I got an email from Seymour the night before he died, and he knew he might be in trouble. Plus, he was with Jerry in New Orleans last week, apparently. Call me back the nanosecond you get this. I decided not to leave the bit about Nixie's on a federal agent's voicemail. I told Rance before that I was kind of a weirdness magnet, but he'd always been skeptical. Of course, he couldn't see or hear the captain, and he wasn't there when I stopped the dragon in the B&B's garden. Not to mention that sea monster back in San Diego. May I ask a question? I turned to see that Botroff was now staring at the laptop screen. It was the first time he'd looked at the laptop with anything other than confusion or disdain in six months. Uh, sure? Your comrades who perished. They were both discovered beneath the sea, bereft of clothing, precisely one week apart, yes? Yeah, why? The spectral lettering on this device mentions the term Nixies. I was starting to get what my Uncle Harry used to call a queasy feeling in his gizzard. Yeah, he did. Why do you want to know about Nixies? Quite a bit. I'm sorry, what do you know about Nixies? Quite a bit, I'm sad to say. I was murdered by one. To be continued on Friday. Uh, again, please support my Patreon at patreon.com slash cred. You can also find me online at decandido.net. You can read my blog at decandido.wordpress.com. Uh, and please, please, please stay safe. Thanks very much.